same family that sits on all the thrones of Europe. And since the 1500s, they have taxed the European people. And tax is the main game in town. Tax does not exist merely to upkeep your country, to pay for schools, to pay for hospitals. In actual fact, if you really sit down and you work out how much tax they're taking, officially, in income tax, every 12 months, they take £660 billion pounds in income tax every 12 months from the British people. Now there's 337 million people in Europe. There's 67 million roughly in Britain. Okay, we're one of the densely, most densely populated countries in Europe. If you really sit down with a calculator, a pen, a piece of blank paper, and you work out 660 billion pounds every 12 months, it's not difficult to work out that if you go along to your local nationwide building society and knock on the door and say, hey, I've got 660 billion pounds to put in a nationwide super saver account. <laughs> the amount of interest that you get on 660 billion pounds in 12 months is enough money to actually run the schools, run the hospitals, and run the basic infrastructure of the country. There is not really a reason why taxation should be this continuing this continuing kind of uh, stone around everybody's ankles where we're all like dragging around income tax. Now, normal working people have the tax taken directly out of their wages, that's P-A-Y-E. If you're a very, very wealthy person, let's say, I don't know, Lord Rocket, say, if you're an aristocrat, you are Schedule D. That means you are not P.A. That means that you tell the Inland Revenue how much you make. You tell the Inland Revenue how much your property is worth. You tell the Inland Revenue how much your valuable artifacts are. And then they will calculate the tax and they say, Oh Lord Rocket, your tax is this much. And you say, Alright, thank you very much. Now, this has led to massive, massive corruption. Lord Mandelson, Lord Brockett, uh, Lord Geoffrey Archer, these people are massively corrupt. And the ongoing taxation regime which we have at the moment has led and bred to more and more and more uh, illegal uses of public money, more and more corruption. Thank you. Cheers, cheers, in. And just, just to give you one example, um, the day before September the 11th, 2001, there was a photo opportunity and a press conference with Donald Rumsfeld, and he was under a bit of pressure from the US press, and the US press had a question, and it was this. Why did three accountants from the Pentagon resign their jobs and go public? And so Rumsfeld formed a photo opportunity and a press conference. And the reason that those three accountants resigned, and the reason they went public, is because 2.3 trillion that's trillion with a T. That's what comes after a billion. Has gone missing. Now, most of us are happy if we are cleaning and doing the hoovering that we find a pound coin down the back of the sofa. They're actually looking for 2.3 trillion dollars. That is so much money that if you then went with that amount of money to the nationwide and put that into a super saver account, you would have enough money coming in as interest. You were not spending that 2.3 trillion, just spending the interest 
you would have the equivalent gross national income of Romania, Hungary, Greece, Spain, Portugal, France, Germany, which has got a big economy, and the United Kingdom all put together on the interest from your local nationwide branch with 2.3 trillion dollars that has been it's been lost <laughs> and so those three accountants resigned there was a press conference Donald Rumsfeld said yes you know it's very difficult uh, it, you know it's a matter of life and death because this is money for the defense of the nation and then kaboom the next day we have 911 it's all forgotten about. It's all forgotten about because the, 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 the news agencies, the news feed agencies, like the BBC, like Reuters, like I said before, so if you can imagine, it's like the old magic trick where you've got each news story is like an upturned egg cup <laughs> with a P under it. What they will do is they say, oh my God, people have found out about $2.3 trillion. We'll just shift that around, shift that around, shift that around. Okay, and that's what you're watching on the news. And it fools people who are part of the political system. I go for, uh, you know, now and again, I go for a cup of tea with my MP, who's Clive Effort in Elton. He used to be a, a London black cabbie. And I say these things to Clive, and he goes, it's absolutely amazing all of this. <laughs> He's just a cabbie, he doesn't understand any of this himself. And then one, one day I was explaining all of this kind of thing to him, and he said to me, he goes, I wondered why they didn't give a desk to Ken Livingston when he became a member of Parliament. You know, even people in the political arena are fooled by this kind of, you know, Shoft, the soft shoe shuffle of corruption. All right. So coming back to what I was saying, there is an agenda. <coughs> Nothing that you're seeing is happening by accident. Nothing that you're seeing is an accidental message. None of it. Everything that you're seeing is either there to distract you away from what's really important, or it's a kind of smudge and fudge situation, like we saw with Gareth Williams the MI6 guy, who the police then smeared his character and saying, well, you know, we don't know what he was doing at night. He could have been, you know, sort of uh, going out with male prostitutes and all this kind of thing. That's to fudge and smudge the situation so that nobody asks the question, hey, isn't there a license to kill? Doesn't that exist? There is a license to kill. People in the British military intelligence services have licenses to assassinate and these assassinations are the result of very very careful planning they have folders and research dossiers on every single leader in the world and if they need to assassinate somebody they will say, oh, uh, you know, there you go, John Lewis, there's, there's, uh, there, there's, your, there's your license there, go to Romania, they'll be there in such and such a day, and, uh, you know, good, good job, jolly ho, and, uh, do, you know, do the, do, the, do the business. It's been going on for years and years and years, this kind of thing. And um, uh, Dr. John D., where you can go to the Science Museum and you can see all the paraphernalia that he used to actually invoke spirits and demons to get information from the spirit world on behalf of Princess Elizabeth. You can go to the Science Museum and the British Museum and actually see the stuff, all of his paraphernalia that he used to take along to, what's the big palace in West London that's haunted? Hampton Court. Hampton Court. He used to take that along to Hampton Court and he used to have soirees. You know, so, uh, um, not soirees, uh, seances. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, saying, you know, what is going to happen? Where are we going to find diamonds? Where are we going to find diamonds? All this kind of thing. That was really going on, and to a certain extent, it's still going on. Um, yeah, now, to put into a nutshell 
in a, in a pub like this with a very limited amount of time to speak. They've been following this plant.